I first came to Africa, it was to Abidjan in the Ivory Coast, just over 50 years ago. It was to participate on behalf of the US Treasury in the drafting of the Articles of Agreement of the African Development Fund. My most recent trip to Africa was to Addis Ababa in late February of last year, just before the pandemic curtailed travel. I'd gone to Ethiopia to meet with representatives of nine African countries seeking entry into the WTO, the World Trade Organization, as well as with Ethiopian officials about their own country's application. These two visits are the African bookends of my career in public service. Well, not quite. On a brisk, clear morning a week later, on March 1 of this year, in my last official act as co-acting Director General of the WTO, I stood on the front steps of the WTO to welcome its first African Director General and first woman in that position, Dr. Ngozi okonjo uela It was a day full of promise for Africa and for the WTO. My purpose in talking with you today is to put the Pan-African Agreement in the context of the global trading system, a system embodied in the World Trade Organization, and the great possibilities that exist for both the African uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement and the WTO. The AFCFTA should be transformative. It is a blueprint for the freer movement of goods, services, and people across Africa for the benefit of all. According to the World Bank estimates, the Pan-Continental uh, Agreement could lift 30 million people out of extreme poverty. As the largest free trade area in terms of number of participating countries, the FTA can provide the economies of scale needed to attract investments in higher value added production, generate innovation driven growth and entrepreneurship through linking the markets in Africa. While concentrating on African regional growth should be a top priority for Africa, it should never be forgotten that most of the world's markets lie outside of Africa. Africa accounts for 20% of the world's population, but only 3% of global GDP. Even with African growth above the world average, a two-track model is needed, substantially improving intra-African trade while deepening engagement with the rest of the world. What is required is not only an increase in cross-border trade in Africa in agriculture and raw materials, but also in industrial products and services. Africa must also accelerate deeper involvement in global value chains, as Southeast Asia has done so successfully. Regional integration is not a substitute for global engagement. The two are complementary. Regional and multilateral integration through membership in the AFCFTA and the WTO can knit together an African continent that can help unify and amplify Africa's voice on the global stage in pursuit of sustainable peace and development. Economic connectivity can bring inclusive and sustainable peace, political stability, and higher standards of living. One important means to enhance the prospects of success in the regional integration agenda is participation and engagement with the WTO. Nine African countries, Algeria, Comoros, Equatorial Guinea, Ethiopia, Libya, Sao Tome and Principe, Somalia, South Sudan, and Sudan are in the process of acceding to the WTO to join the 44 African countries that are already members. WTO accession represents a tool to strengthen the rule of law, ensure policy predictability and transparency, and promote international trade cooperation. It emphasizes the presence of necessary frameworks and practices that are required to create an environment that fosters economic development and attracts foreign investment. The WTO accession process and membership help these nations acquire and strengthen the structures that they need to take full advantage of the benefits that can be derived from the AFCFTA. The WTO Secretariat and its members of the WTO can offer crucial support through technical assistance and policy advice as governments undertake implementation of the Regional Free Trade Agreement. Two areas which come to mind for immediate practical assistance. First, the Secretariat can help with technical work of implementing the agreement, 
the scheduling, certification, and verification of the provisional tariff concessions. Second, the WTO can facilitate discussions on difficult issues involved in integration, such as rules of origin. Resolving the complexities of moving goods across borders, making it easier for goods originated in Africa to obtain duty-free treatment in participating African countries is essential to obtaining the full positive benefits of the agreement. The Chief of Staff of the, Sec of the Secretary General of the AFCFTA Secretariat, Mr. Silver Okjokol, has called on governments and businesses from party states to prioritize what he describes as low-hanging fruit, particularly agricultural trade. This is an area where the WTO can be particularly helpful. Tariffs can slow trade, and it's an object of the AFCFTA to eliminate them as a meaningful barrier. But more insidious, less transparent, are non-tariff barriers, particularly in the form of standards. Failure to meet a standard can halt trade in a product entirely. More often, sanitary and phytosanitary standards, it's called SPS, increase trade costs, and this can be of critical importance. Standards are crucial to agricultural value chains and to improving competitiveness and the quality of made in Africa goods and services. Reducing these barriers can especially benefit small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, which will be particularly helpful to women. The WTO Standards and Trade Development Facility, it's called STDF, funnels assistance for promoting compliance with standards and conformity assessment procedures in developing countries for agricultural products and essential for moving food across borders. An example where standards will be particularly important, however, is not just agriculture, but with respect to the development of solar energy, which is key to African development. There's an opportunity for Africa to lead the world in regional harmonization of standards for solar energy products. The new frontier of standards is moving towards climate-related standards. The WTO should either broaden the scope of the existing STDF or create a new facility to address industrial quality infrastructure needs. The WTO is a forum where all economies have a role to play, no matter what their stage of development. During my recent service as Deputy Director General of the WTO, I chaired the Director General's Consultative Forum on Cotton Development Assistance. The moving force behind the initiative were four of the poorest WTO members, West African countries, Benin, Chad, Mali, and Burkina Faso. The basis for making the forum work, for delivering benefits to these countries, was the, their pragmatic approach, the four countries' pragmatic approach to identifying their needs with specificity. Pragmatism, as opposed to demands for the fulfillment of rights not universally acknowledged, is a way to achieve greater responsiveness of the international community, as well as a contribution to the working of the global trading system. It's widely acknowledged that increased resources are needed to boost the African continent's phys physical infrastructure. Physical infrastructure, however, is not the only impediment to continental integration. African governments should consider introducing simplified customs clearance at the borders to streamline the movement of goods. In this regard, the WTO's Trade Facilitation Agreement and Trust Fund are directly relevant. The importance of cutting red tape, creating greater efficiency and transparency cannot be overstated, especially for landlocked countries. In meeting the trade challenges of the 21st century, the rapid rise of e-commerce in Africa is particularly important and has been brought to the forefront by the AFCFTA negotiations. Africa can be a pathfinder for pointing out where global rules for e-commerce need to be established through WTO negotiations. It should do so, both within the AFCFTA and within the WTO. It should be a leader. The WTO can also play a constructive role in facilitating the restoration of trade finance. The COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the pre-existing state of diminished availability of trade finance, a widening gap amounting to $1.5 trillion worldwide has frustrated developing countries' participation in international trade, impeding the ability of international trade to support post-COVID 
economic recovery, and the ability of small businesses to capitalize on being and be included in the benefits of free trade. And the aftermath of the financial crisis just over a decade ago, the WTO brought together major international financial institutions, banks, private sector actors to address this need of trade finance. It can do so again with a focus on mobilizing financing for MISMEs, the micro and medium small enterprises, and leveraging big data and artificial intelligence to counter the trade finance rollback. Additional financial resources more broadly are needed to enhance the effectiveness of the AFCFDA during this time of global crisis. One possible approach would be a partnership between the WTO, the World Bank, the IMF, the African Development Fund, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank to create a Pan-African Fund for Trade, an AFT, a Pan-African Fund for Trade, dedicated to the economic integration of the African continent. AFCFTA members of the WTO can make the multilateral trading system have a fresh outlook for a positive future through trade. The secretariats of the WTO, the African Union, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, and AFCFTA should collaborate to make the most of the synergies between the continental agreement and the acquis of the multilateral trading system. My hope is that the voice of Africa will be strong and positive in the WTO, leading on issues that should be of common continent-wide interest, such as the adoption of a ban on export restrictions when it comes to purchases by the World Food Program, WFP. There's no reason why this can't be accomplished. It should be accomplished with African leadership. Africa's na narrative is changing, and the continent should seize the opportunities presented by the AFCFTA to liberalize trade and investment and introduce the necessary reforms that would make Africa an even more attractive investment destination for both domestic and foreign investors. Proper and effective implementation of the AFCFTA is key to realizing its full potential as an instrument to achieving robust economic growth and sustainable development of the continent. African policymakers should harness the synergies between the WTO and the AFCFTA to achieve this laudable objective. They should call upon the WTO members to constitute a working party backed by a cross-divisional secretariat task force to help assure that the resources of the WTO are fully mobilized to help assure that the AFCFTA fulfills its bright promise. I thank you very much. I wish you well in this conference. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person.